Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. I'm really excited to have you guys. So today, uh, Amla and I will be talking about understanding the sources of pain, mainly the neck pain and low back pain, learning how to improve your uh, posture while working at home, um, while working, exercising, uh, doing your household activities. And lastly, we'll be doing breathing exercises as we all have um, adapted to the new style of breathing with the extended use of mask these days. So we'll just go over uh, the breathing exercises. So let's get started. Neck pain, we, um, we all experience neck pain at some point or the other. It's ma majority of the time the neck pain comes and it, gets, it goes by itself without um, any um, without doing much of it, but many times the neck pain remains for a longer duration. So, um, and that's when you seek consult, like physician, physical therapist uh, advice. So just want to give you a quick overview. What are the main causes of the neck pain? So the first is the myofascial pain. So typically this occurs when you uh, sit in one posture for too long. Uh, for instance, um, while working from desk, driving, or you end up sleeping in a wrong posture, you end up getting knots in the upper back region, and and it, it, it's very tender and sensitive whenever you touch. This can be easily relieved with the help of um, some myofascial release, um, neck stretches, and just changing position. Neck strain, this... Um, this also occurs mainly because of overstretching of the neck muscles at times just because of the poor posture or um, any injury from before. Moving on to neck fracture and whiplash injury, this, this is commonly seen, uh, the most commonly seen is during the time of a motor vehicle accident. So because of the external force, your neck first goes in the backward motion and then it come, moves forward, resulting in the strain in the ligaments and at times rupturing even uh, the vertebra. So, um, and it, it's also seen at, uh, during the contact sports injury. Um, the lastly most commonly uh, occurred um, neck pain is because of the cervical spondylosis. This is also called as osteoarthritis of neck. So in this, uh, the cartilage degenerate, there's a wear and tear changes going on um, of the cartilages and this results in bony spur uh, or bony growth which um, which in turn creates some um, like narrowing of the disc spaces like between the two vertebra there is a disc so um, because of the extra bone growth the, the disc space reduces and there is some more pressure and at times um, pressure on the nerves which results in numbness and tingling sensation in our hands. So this is just a, co a, qu a quick talk on the neck pain. So just in case if you come across with this uh, terminology, you can uh, you know, help know a little about it. Moving forward, text neck. So the text neck is most commonly observed these days. Uh, if you see our, your family members or um, your friends, um, it's it's mainly because of the posture we are getting used to. Like if you're hold, if you're working on a screen or you're, if you're uh, using iPhones, iPad for too long, you end up putting your forehead too forwards or and bending down for a long, long duration. So that results in an extra stress in the neck region. And it creates um, muscle pain, like the shoulder pain, neck pain, headaches, um, and, and you know, even the rounding of the chest. So it in turn, it affects the entire body. So, you know, you might experience like the changes in your breathing, more tightness in the chest, uh, changes in your um, digestion at times if, it, if it's too prolonged, uh, if the posture is hold for too prolonged time. Um, typically, our head, it waves around uh, like 10 pounds, but as you get into this new posture of putting head to forward, you end up putting more stress in the neck region. Um, so how it can be easily corrected and modified. How do you do it? So the first thing is make sure you hold your phone at your eye level and make sure if whenever possible you support your elbow. Uh, so this way it's, it's less work for your head, um, neck muscles. Moving on, take frequent breaks from your phone and laptop uh, as possible. 
um, set a timer to remind you to walk around every 20 to 30 minutes, avoiding looking down for an extended time. So just being more aware of your neck position and correcting when needed. So just like, you know, um, doing simple rolls or just doing uh, correcting the posture is a good way to start. And lastly, just make sure you sit square to your work screen. So be it like a small screen or a big screen, make sure you square yourself in front of the screen while you're sitting. So that, that's a good way to go ahead. Sleeping posture, we all have like heard the talk of, um, you know, the, what's a good mattress, good pillow, and there is no direct or right answer to this. It all depends from person to person. So the big thing, the biggest um, um, important thing here is to just make sure any, ma uh, any, um, any pillow you use, it should help you maintain your alignment, um, the neck alignment. So it shouldn't let your neck lift go too forwards or drop your neck too back so any type of pillow um it, again the pillow shouldn't be too soft or too hard um it should be firm enough and it should help you maintain uh, the neutral alignment so for instance if you see here this pillow is too low so it end up put a, uh, dropping your head backwards and it creates stress in the um, and shortness in the back of the neck muscles. Same thing if the pillow is too high, it exaggerates the spinal curve. Mm. So just trying to uh, adjust and play around with the pillow in a way that it keeps the neck in a neutral alignment. Similarly with the orthopedic, with any type of mattress, make sure the mattress is firm enough, it's not too hard or it's not too soft. So this way you uh, focus on your uh, keeping your alignment neutral and at times if you prefer using a pillow you can place a pillow between your legs while you're sleeping on the side or underneath your knees while you're on your back so this helps to release some stress from the back and make you feel comfortable in the night time so uh, moving ahead uh, i'll like everyone to uh, uh, slowly go over this quick exercise so what we'll be doing is um so while you're sitting on your chair, I'd like you to scoot forwards a little. So we're gonna work on aligning the back. So while you're sitting, also try your best to keep your uh, tailbone straight. So you're not dropping your tailbone down. So all you do is you just lift your tailbone up, upright. Tuck your tummy in. Slowly roll your shoulders back and slight chin tuck. So this is a simple way, uh, simple uh, technique which you can follow while you're working at your desk. So all we are focusing here is um, keeping your tailbone straight. So once you start from there, um, it, it, the alignment definitely um, improves. So just changing position at times and if you, if you get a chance, just trying to sit on the edge and lifting your tailbone up and rolling your shoulders back and chin tuck. Okay, so now let's uh, do some uh, neck exercises. So beginning with chin tuck. So I like everyone to slowly draw your chin back and hold it for a couple seconds. So everyone will have different tolerance. So based on how long you can take it, just hold it. In a way, when you do a chin tuck, just observe your ears are right perpendicular to your shoulder and you do, you slowly draw your chin back. So this way you activate the deep core muscles and it's not that your, um, you know, the superficial muscles are overworking or overstretching. Like typically this is a common habitual posture we all are used to. So just working on chin tuck um, every now and then in any position, any activities you do um, will help you strengthen the neck muscles. Then simple uh, range of motion exercises, mobility exercises is just by looking slowly up, down. And if you like, you can hold on to your ears and then slowly guide your head up and down. If you feel dizzy, um, you can just modify it, just going a little extent up and down. Then looking to the right, back to the left, touching your ear to the shoulder on each side. Okay. 
So um, initially you might see some stiffness. So just slowly beginning to um, start doing in small ranges and advancing um, gradually. Now I'll go, uh, hand over to Amla. She'll talk about low back pain. Hi everyone. So uh, we talk uh, as much as neck pain, we also experience uh, low back pain as mostly people do. And as you can see, uh, they have, we have a Canadian statistics here, which said 11 million people uh, suffered from it, at least like 11 million people per year suffered it. And it's been said that one person in his lifetime, in his or her lifetime will definitely have low back pain. So it's very common. And as we can see, uh, we'll go over the causes. We'll, you'll come to know how, why it's so common. So as you can see in the next picture, you see the causes of low back pain. We're going to start with poor sitting posture, which is a very important topic today that we thought because everyone is sitting for so long these days. We are not able to move as much we used to. And so uh, sitting, sitting has increased, sitting time has increased. So, uh, and also the way we sit. Now sitting on a desk also, you start with sitting upright and then you suddenly start slouching. It happens to everyone. It's not possible to maintain your back straight for the whole one hour or two hours, but you can always start or you can always switch back. So poor sitting posture is one cause. And another similar cause is a frequent bending forward posture. So we have the text neck. Along with that, we also have a back slouching. So we always are on our phone sitting like this, slouched on the couch or even while working, we sometimes go very slouched. We are bending in forward and looking at the screen. So all this changes the alignment and changes posture. So frequent bending is also one of the causes and also very uh, clear causes trauma. So if you have a fall that leads to a uh, pain in the back and it later on over the years, it just might, you know, it can lead to other causes. So that's one. And you must have heard this like heavy lifting is again, like you must have heard it and experienced it as well. That if you lift a heavy box, you suddenly get pain or you lift anything heavy next day, you end up with getting sore back or something like that. But it's just not heavy lifting the way you lift it. So in the picture, they have given the very uh, correctly the wrong posture that the person is lifting. They always, you always have to be careful while lifting. You shouldn't like bend forward and lift. You always keep your back straight, squat with your knees and lift. It's even, even if you lift a pen, you should be lifting the same way. So imagine if you lift something heavy, how much strain you're putting on your back. So always be careful. One point here is if you are bending and lifting something, always keep your back straight, bend with your knees and then lift something. So that cause, that is a very typical cause of low back pain, which we don't even realize over the years, we might be lifting it in the wrong way and getting the pain. So to, just to avoid that. And again, degenerative conditions like age related changes that happens to everyone. And nowadays it's coming down to like, the years are coming down. A 35 year old person also has the similar changes what a older person might get. So it's just very rapidly increasing. So, so to avoid all this, uh, we thought uh, let's move, move on to the next slide, which also gives stiffness as one of the causes. How many, like you guys must have experienced, does anyone have that in the morning you get like back pain and when you move around a little bit, it goes away. So that's one classic stiffness in the lower back. This is also because of the first slide, which we saw you were lifted something in the wrong position. You sat in the wrong position, maybe a day, maybe a month, whatever it might be. It all leads up to a stiff back and also strains. So lifting something gives strain to the muscles and that in general weakens the back and you get degenerative changes and also arthritic changes is one of the causes for having a stiff back. So, we don't want to scare anyone, but it's just you come to know that why I'm getting this stiff back in the morning. It's because of all these reasons. So to do that, what we decided is in the next slide, we'll just uh, tell you the correct positions for sitting to start with. And you must have encountered this a number of times, but it's always, you know, bombarding. This is very important that please do not slouch and sit. It causes a strain in your neck. It gives strain at your back. And, and you don't even realize that wrong posture puts a strain on your wrist. So many people working at desks or, or often uh, get, end up having wrist pain and they don't even realize they were like, I didn't do anything that, you know, I didn't play tennis or anything like that. Why is my wrist like aching suddenly? It's because of your posture. It just correlates and everything ends up with these uh, trigger points, which are shown in the first figure. So to avoid that, we have the middle figure, which is correct sitting posture. 
as you can see they tell you to maintain a neutral neck keep your screen at an arm's length the measurements given is almost like an arm's length then keep your elbows at 90 and your knees at 90 or a little more than 90 now keeping at 90 again it's not it's not an ideal like it's not you can't have 90 degree sitting and back sitting but what we say is at least every 20 30 minutes change your posture get into that posture get a tummy tuck sit straight and just concentrate on giving that correct posture for your body and also nowadays it's been like it's researched a lot and people have ended up buying uh, standing desks so you can see in the third uh, picture the person is standing and working it's a great way and a great alternative to change your posture and also the standing desk converts into a sitting desk so you can always change the height so it's a really good way to just you know change the position you are not slouching the back in this you're standing and working maybe for a little while and then you sit again so the point here is changing the posture you can always do other things such as get like you must be doing these things just getting up to get water and now since everyone is working at home uh, you don't have the frequent breaks that you get at work so just do the same thing at home just get yourself a cup of like a glass of water from the kitchen or just move around just stretch for a while put uh, put reminders on your phones that helps because it's impossible to you know do everything ideally but just reminders help and also we have a few uh, ideas for work home stations see if you can uh, do this uh, such as getting a fitness ball it's just not for sitting they do that mat exercises these days you get pilates doing these ways you get core strengthening exercises some must have these at home but sitting on it and working is very very effective and because it always keeps you activated like you're always you're keeping your maintaining your balance and so many muscles at the back deeper muscles deeper muscles at the stomach and knee muscles they are always working when you sit on the ball so it just happens without even reminding your like you know without reminding your body to do that is your body just does it for you so it's a great way to sit on a ball and work or we say go back to our old roots you know go into virasan position if you have meetings where you don't have to uh, have a video call you're just on audio just go on a softer surface like a mat or go on your bed just kneel like sitting on your knees and sit up straight and just uh, do your work for a while it really helps activate your core muscles at the in the stomach and the back it helps activate your knee muscles so it's a very great exercise simple but very effective so we definitely encourage everyone to go into low sit no low kneeling and then as the person is getting up straight you can just stand up from that position on your knees so again it you help move your muscles and you help your muscles to get up from that sleep which we usually do when we are sitting so these are some ideas to get moving and get from get a break from your normal sitting posture which is so bad for your back so uh, on top, uh, since we are on that point we have a few ideas to get moving so when we go it's time to get moving so let's do some um, like exercises which you can at your desk for now so just to do that uh, i'll ask kapoorva to help with that so exercises while sitting at your desk so the first thing is leg extension all you do is uh, slowly kick your leg back and forth so in order to add resistance you guys uh, can uh, use therabands just add resistance via therabands put ankle weights and then just alternating um, kicking legs back and forth right left right left that's good everyone's doing it we can we can see even though we can't see your legs we know <laughs> that's nice yeah moving on to the next exercise so the spinal twist like just looking back on each side and when when you look all the way back you try to hold that position for 30 seconds so you should feel that stretch okay on the other side So this is a really good stretch. So just incorporate in your routine. And when you when you go on each side, just try to hold it minimal for 30 seconds. Good. 
moving on to the next the upper back stretch so you pull or lift your arms forwards hold it in front and try to just reach as far as you can clasp your hands together and then just reach forwards and then slowly back and hold the back of your chair so you get like a good extension in the end so you're trying to open the chest out Okay, again, holding it for 30 seconds. Okay, moving on to the lumbar core. So the lumbar core is a really good exercise where you can activate your core muscles while you're sitting and working. So just trying to draw your belly button in and hold it for a couple seconds, um, beginning maybe five seconds or so, and then slowly release it. So let's, let's do it together. I like everyone to sit straight, sit tall, slowly draw your belly button in. Hold it for a couple seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Again. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. So depending upon uh, where you begin, you can slowly advance it. So the, the biggest cue here is just drawing your belly button in and um, sustaining that posture for some time. I'll like Amla to uh, talk about the wrist exercises. Okay, so since we spoke about uh, how our back or our neck postures can affect our wrist or just working too long in that one posture also affects wrists, you can also do this at your desk. Uh, with such such as these uh, range of motion exercises so just uh, you have to completely suppose you are facing your palm down and uh, now you're going to complete the range bending your wrist and with the other hand you're just going to end the movement like giving it an end range stretch holding it for five seconds then again in the other direction as you can see in the figure like wrist stretches like these you can do these at your desk whenever you're taking a break or just you know, change the position of your wrist as well. Do not forget it like you did at the neck and back. And also some other range of motion exercises like face your palms to the screen and just move them out and in without bending your, like without moving your forearm. So just you're going outer range and inner range and also some finger exercises like opening up the web and bring the fingers in back again open up the web and again in. Now another, uh, like these are the normal wrist stretches for your wrist, but there are also like for the fingers, you have like must tendons there. And sometimes you get uh, some pains when you stretch your hand or move out your hand, something like that. It is due to neck pain or just muscles tightening up. So there are tendon gliding exercises, which we also recommend for people who are at their desks for long. So just curl your fingers, Hold it for some five seconds and then back again. So these are some of the exercises that you can try at home. And if you have something like a stress ball or any like a, like you can make a ball out of socks just to start with or a stress ball, just keep, are you guys doing it? Like I'm not sure who does it, but some people do do them regularly. So it's actually great. So for grip strengthening or just, you know, moving the, getting your blood supply out there. And also you can use, uh, if you have uh, dumbbells or something like that, definitely do wrist exercises as well. And wrist flexion with the ball and wrist extension. That is okay, but since you're doing it on your own, it's fine. So just these are some simple wrist exercises to add to your uh, at the desk exercises. So now moving forward, these are something away from the desk. So we highly recommend doing squats and lunges. But doing them in the right way is very important. So uh, one of the thing is uh, the squats. So I don't know if you, if you guys are interested in doing it right now. Do you want to get away and try it once with us? So we can get up and... Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, just like look at the figure. And one thing we want to try, make you do is a squat in the right way. So every time you squat, what's important is not to bend your back. Do not bend your back, go down like that. Squat with your back straight and make sure your knees are in line with your toes. So the squatting should happen 
not with your front thigh muscles. You shouldn't feel it in your front thigh muscles. You should feel it in the back. You should feel it at the buttocks. So that's the most important thing. You always see videos and you think, oh, it's not happening or my like knees are getting strained. It shouldn't happen. So keep your back straight, bend from your like hips, bend from your hips with your back straight. Knees should not go over the toes and then come up. You can hold a position for five seconds if you wish to and come back or you can just do a plain simple squat. But do, do, do them for 10 or 15 repetitions at a time. Yes, very nice. Everyone is doing it. That's cool. Keep your hands forward. You can clasp your hands just to get a nice range of motion. Very nice. So yeah, so squatting in the right position is what we definitely uh, want to stress here is that we do not want you to squat and get your like heavy in your front thigh muscles. That's not the right way. Very nice. Yeah, we hope you like this. Exactly. And the next thing is also important. Oh, sorry, uh, we'll continue to one more exercise, which is away from the rest, is a lunge. It helps in the front thigh muscle exercises and also helps in your knee strengthening and your buttock strength. So what we want to do is stand up straight and you're going to bring one foot forward than the other in one straight line. So your feet are in one line in front of the other and you're just going to bend down back straight, bend like the picture. You can bend all the way down so that your other knee touches the ground or you can just go halfway and come back. It's all on your level, what you want to go to. So just go down and up. I'm sorry we are not able to show you in the screen, but the picture helps definitely. Yes, a simple squat is you can start with, I don't know if some people might be doing it as an extra regular exercise, so that's great. But these are two some of the very important exercises you can just do in while working and just go away and do 10 reps and come back. Yes, that's good. Very nice. Thank you for participating guys, really. Thank you. And then we are going to sit back at our desks and do some breathing exercises now. So these days you might have noticed, you know, with the help of wearing the mask have changed your breathing style. Like you're, we all are breathing shallow just because of the mask, the, the less air going in. So trying to focus more on deep breathing exercises is really, really important. So let's begin. So I like everyone to hold on to your chest sideways at your axilla level. Breathe in, breathe in through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. So all we are trying to do is focus on chest expansion and we are using our hands to feel the motion in through the nose out through the mouth. Now slowly going at mid level. Again, breathe in, breathe out. So while you're doing this, uh, for, try to for, uh, make sure that you're not using your neck muscles um, and you're um, using more of the chest muscle and you're feeling the chest expansion. Lastly, going all the way down on your rib cage. Breathing in, breathing out. You can also add resistance uh, with the help of a TheraBand um, or a towel. Just cross it across and do the same uh, um, breathing pattern. Breathe in and breathe out. So it's just uh, added resistance while you're uh, doing the breathing exercises. Moving on to the uh, abdominal breathing. I like you to place your hands on your stomach and slowly feel the motion. So you breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Breathe in through the nose. Now this time try to hold it for a couple seconds. One, two, three, and slowly breathe out. So abdominal breathing is really, really good because the diaphragm is one of the big muscles in the body and we always don't get an attention to this muscle so it, it gets left out. So making sure you start with breathing uh, like the abdominal breathing while you're sitting or even lying down with your knees bent is a good way to begin. Um, it, 
it helps to improve like you know um improve the stabilization of your back while you're sitting for prolonged time and also it helps with your digestion like you know many times you might have experienced um like reflux like you know the food going back to your um, chest like, like you know so this happens because the weakness in this muscle so just making sure like you begin focusing on the diaphragm all you do is you place your hands breathe in and out and if if that is getting pretty uh, easy comfortable for you you can put a weight like an added resistance on your stomach and while you are lying down and repeating the same way breathe in and out moving ahead so the biggest takeaway from this session is make sure that you move 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 throughout the day like you make sure you do sit to stand if you are sitting at the desk if, you know make sure you stand up sit down get do some squats lunges get back to your uh, work so changing position is highly highly important focusing on breathing exercises stretches um is a good way to begin um there's a rule called 2020 so all you do is every 20 minutes you look Uh, away from your desk at a twenty degree angle for twenty seconds, and then you come back. Then after twenty minutes, you again look to the other side at twenty degree angle for twenty seconds. So this way, you you get to move, and it's just a simple uh, a simple way to remember twenty twenty. Um, and making you know um it it is difficult to find ex uh, time for exercises. So just trying to incorporate in your daily routine, like while you are working, just like in the middle, if you get 5 10 minutes just doing your squats doing your lunges or if you are cleaning you know or if you are standing at the sink just standing on one leg doing your heel raises so incorporating those simple ideas while you are uh, on the go uh, keeping up with your daily routine is is one of the easiest way to keep keep up with your fitness level um and lastly you know tracking your activity level so nowadays we all have smartphones smart watches so make sure you keep you get those uh, steps done you know every day um try to follow your friends check with them you know if they are able to uh, how are they doing that will motivate you or you know that will be a good teamwork which you guys can work do it together so some important tips here make sure you know you uh, follow a good sleeping hygiene making sure you fall asleep at a certain time and ha uh, wake up at at the right time so this way you have like a normal circadian rhythm and following that um and if you have any issues with the sleep make sure you work on it because sleeping as you all know is very very important and making sure you get good peaceful um sleep for Six to eight hours is recommended. Meditation, meditation. You know, um, there's a lot we can talk about. But if if you follow like like a formal form of meditation, just giving yourself five minutes, like any time of the day, morning, evening, just trying to focus on your breath, trying to focus or do the countings or any mantra or anything which you like, and you just focus on it for a couple seconds. It helps you to relieve the stress. It helps you relax. and improve your focus your concentration the other way also which you can practice meditation is just by informal ways like you know whatever activities you are doing just trying to be in that moment trying to be in the present moment and um you know um focus on the activity is also one of the form of meditation and lastly uh, monitoring fitness so tracking just just you know checking on your week how did you do did you get to do your exercises are you able to keep up with your walk with your running is is important so these are like just simple uh, simple tips but the, and everyone has their own way to do it just just remember like you know and keep track on yourself if you are able to follow it and do it regularly or no thank you Thank you so much. We are open for questions now. Uh, let us know if you have.